Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you a method how to open up a mineral um, on the alkali side. There are actually three methods, at least three methods I know of, uh, which are quite useful in extracting minerals or opening up minerals um, on the alkali side. The first method is called the lye boil method. The second method is called the lye fusion method and the third method is called the sodium burn method. Today we are going to do the first one, the lye boil method. It's actually the safest one and the easiest to do one. Okay, the way I'm doing it is I am having some mineral here. In this case it's a black volcanic sand that's very finely grind to a very fine powder. Um, these are 800 grams now. So I have measured the same amount of sodium hydroxide. So here I have sodium hydroxide um, pearls or granulate. It's a very fine granulate. And I'm going to mix it. So 800 of this, 800 of that. It's 1600. Now we are going to mix that stuff in here. When you're handling sodium hydroxide it's very important to wear glasses because if that stuff gets in your eyes it's a, it's a big mess. So on your hand it's not so bad but in your eyes it's, it's very bad actually. Okay, so now we are mixing that stuff uh, through with a spoon, metal spoon doesn't matter. Till it is uh, mixed. The finer the powder is, the better it is because. Um, the finer it is, the more surface area it has, so the extraction will be more complete. So it's very good to just grind it really a couple of days till it is it's a very fine, fine powder. Okay, mixing step is finished. So in this step we are preparing the mixture for the actual boil. Um, for this reason I have made here a reaction chamber. So this is a full stainless steel uh, reaction chamber and here um, is an adapter for a reflux con condenser. Meaning I can boil it easily for prolonged times like 24 hours without uh, the need to refill water because of the reflux. Um, so we are simply filling it up with the ore sodium hydroxide mix mixture. This should be done very carefully. There is a hair on mine. Okay. Okay, so now the mineral and the lye is inside the reaction chamber. As I have told, it's about uh, 800 grams of mineral and 800 uh, grams of lye. So usually 
um, I use a little bit more water than lye. In that case, when I have 800 grams of lye, I use about one liter of water. So we are not making a 50-50% uh, lye water solution. We are making um, about 45-55 um, solution, something like that, you know. Uh, so now we are going. This is already prepared. It's water. I don't use distilled water because you know it doesn't make any sense here because anyhow there. Are so many different uh, metal and substances inside that um, doesn't doesn't need to be distilled water. So now we are pouring the water inside. I'm feeling already that it's heating the stainless steel chamber up because what's going on is an exothermic reaction. Meaning, um, when the lye dissolves, it creates heat. So it's already been actually pretty hot. Okay, so this step is finished. And the next step will be to connect the reflux condenser and to start the boil. Okay, so finally the oil is set up. As you can see here, that's the reaction chamber. And above the reaction chamber here, we are having the reflux condenser. So the reflux condenser is basically just uh, an outer tube and an inner tube. And the outer tube, there is water running through. And the inner tube, it's where the, um, the water is condensing and flowing back down and yeah uh, this is basically just the scaffolding of the whole thing that it doesn't doesn't fall and now we're going to let it boil for 24 hours so we have boiled our ore about 24 hours in the concentrated uh, sodium hydroxide solution and the next step that we are going to perform is um, a filtration and after the filtration we are going to precipitate the, the metals out of it okay so let's start it's still quite hot actually it's very hot so I have to use a second pair of gloves because I don't want to burn my fingers. Okay. In this step, it's very important to take care about your safety. So, wear goggles, wear gloves, and if you don't want to, to waste your cloth, then it would be also recommendable to wear a lab coat or something like that because sodium hydroxide is very aggressive and it will destroy um, your clothes if it gets onto it you know just a little spot of it will just make a hole and that's it so wear a lab coat and you're fine okay now we have to be careful because that's still a very very hot sodium hydroxide solution So we are doing it slow. There we go. See, it's very dangerous because it's spitting out but as long as you're wearing goggles it's not so bad if you get it on your skin wash it off if you get it in, in your eyes you're having bad luck okay so this is this is empty now I set it aside I'm going to wipe this away here Yeah. <laughs> 
in order to um, cool it down a little bit more and to make it less concentrated I will add a little bit of cold water if it's somewhat diluted it helps also with the, with the filtration And now it's time for the, for the vacuum filtration. So just using a normal paper filter does work, but you have to change the filter a couple of times. So in order to prevent changing the filter all the time, I, usually what I do is just I use the filter and then I add cotton to it that helps a lot okay so now I can take this glass out already okay good so now we are ready for the filtration let's go Because this is a very fine powder inside, the filtration will actually take pretty long. It could up take uh, up to one hour. So now we are having to wait till the filtration is finished. So the filtration took actually much longer than I'd expected. It's way after midnight now, but this is the result of the filtration step. So we're still having a lye solution containing um, basically half of the periodic table, probably, um, in trace amounts of course. But the elements that we are after here are the precious elements like silver, gold, palladium, iridium, rhodium, ruthenium, osmium. Um, yeah, and the like. So the idea is to lower the pH till we uh, reach pH of 8.5 because at 8.5 we are sure that we have precipitated all the precious elements that I just mentioned alongside with um, all kind of other stuff and in the next video I will try to um, recover the precious elements out of this solution. Okay, let's begin. So here we will do the precipitation. I just add a steering bar Okay, it works. So now we are adding a little bit of our high pH solution, not too much. Okay. Here we're having just plain normal water and we will dilute this with the solution a little bit more. Okay. 
take a quick steer. So now in the next step we have to prepare our acid to lower the pH. I'm going to use hydrochloric acid. But I'm not using this is this is 37% hydrochloric acid, so it's uh, it's strong. We don't need it so strong, so we are going to dilute it down a little bit. Here is already a little bit diluted hydrochloric acid inside. So just making a little bit more. And of course we need a pH meter, which is here. We don't need the pH probe in the beginning, we just need the pH probe when the pH is already a little bit further down. Doesn't make sense to start. Is the pH probe inserted? But I'm going to prepare it anyhow. Okay, let's start. Okay, the first precipitate forms. So we are checking the pH. Probably still high. Yeah, we are still at pH 11.08, so we need we can use that. So now I have to go slowly. We see that the precipitate, precipitate has formed. So now I will slowly lower it to 85 8.83, 8.82, 8.877. Six eight six two five nine. Five 
five five, five four, five two. Okay, we are done. So the precipitation here is done. We are at eight point five. The next step is we are going to transform the precipitate here to let it settle a bit. And now we are going to precipitate all the rest.
Okay, as you see, the precipitation is done and the final step or the final steps that we are going today is to filter that stuff. Um, we want to have that white precipitate here because this is where supposedly the precious elements are in and the top water we can simply discard and then we are going to dry this precipitate overnight and tomorrow we are going to um, continue extracting the precious elements out of this precipitate. Okay, so first of all I'm going to transfer the slurry in here because it makes it easier. Going to wash this with water. Okay, so now it's time for the vacuum filtration. Okay. And again, we have to wait till the filtration is done, but this time it won't take so long because the uh, hydroxide crystals, they are actually um, rather big, so the filtration won't take that long. Finally the powder is, is dry and we have a yield of about 36 grams. So if you remember we started with 800 grams of ore and now we are having a, an extract of the ore of about 36 gram. The powder that you see here it's not totally white, it's a little bit um, white to a very slightly brownish. Um, but this doesn't matter and what we are having here is more or less a hydroxide precipitate of various metals um, occurring in that particular ore that I processed and actually I consider this video now as finished because it covers everything how to uh, simply uh, use a live boil method um, to get this uh, metal precipitate and in an upcoming video I will um, give a process, a procedure how to 
um, target how to get the values out of that white powder, how to get the precious metal metals out of that particular white powder and um, I already can tell you the first step is done with a machine that you can see here so we will subject the white powder to heavy ultraviolet radiation to shake the sodium off the precious metals in order to get um, a hold on them to be able to perform some wet chemistry or whatever um, further steps are necessary to extract them. Yeah, so let's do it. It's just the first step I'm going to show you. I have this metal um, dish here. So we'll simply go and trans transfer the white powder in this metal dish carefully. Okay. Yeah, so everything inside. Now we're going to spread it out a little bit. Yeah, it's done. You can see it. And now we will start to subject this white powder to really heavy ultraviolet radiation with this machine here. <clears throat> That's it. And I'll report back when I have the values out. Bye bye.